we talk about social equation it's more to do with emotions only communication is the key why supposedly if you feel that the other person is ghosting you in terms of friendship speak out despite of no matter how much you do for people they'll still pinpoint one thing that they don't like about you men and women are wired differently we come from a very different space altogether it is important to know the person how they are before you completely give in you become like an open version to them know what the person is like explore about them if you say like i'm going to meet you soon be specific when we all have a lot of questions about relationships you have a lot of questions about relationships and a lot of those questions came in to us and we thought let's do an episode where we tap into all of that get in someone who's a relationship expert relationship coach so we got ekta dikshit in to talk about all your questions on this episode of take a pause with me varun dugrala but before you go there you to make sure you hit subscribe and smash the bell icon go straight to my chat with ekta It's always tricky to figure out how to start conversations, especially when it's the kind of questions we've gotten. Because when you and I start discussing the what would we discuss on this podcast, and so let's ask people out there what they want to know, and we put that question box out there, and we got this stream of questions, and then we have to sit and really figure out how do we kind of zone this one down, how do you bring it down to a few boxes. So, firstly, welcome on to the show. Thank you, thank you for having me. A great place to start. was one of the most interesting questions which i got i think it's a great point to start also because it let's someone actually asked saying why do we need friendship i think it's a great place to start yeah talking about friendship i think it starts from our need we primarily are wired like hardwired for belongingness okay for being loved for being um in in community and which is one of the reason why we look forward to having friendships we look forward to having uh, people around us that's why we have families we have joint families of course now coming down to uh, today's time and age where there are less of joint families but of course we do have nuclear ones but this is one of the primary reason going back to our hunting and gathering days we used to live in tribes because we used to get the sense of belongingness from that community yeah and this is one of the primary reason why we always look forward to having people in our life because we want to be a part of some kind of a cult or a culture or religion or something of those lines and which is why we look forward to having friendships because a it makes us feel a part of something second it's because we want to be heard we want to feel loved we want to be acknowledged of course our family does that for us but having said that there are a lot of barriers when it comes to family there are few things you don't you're not comfortable sharing with your family and which is why friendships of certain age where you're not being judged you're not being um tyrannized for something or uh, you're not you're not being put into certain kind of a box that you're supposed to do abc thing and not supposed to do yeah. the rest of the things yeah. that's why we need friendship to not fit into those boxes and yet be ourselves so this is one of the reason why we need friendship to to have that sense of belongingness to get the acknowledgement from someone and not being judged at the same time when i think back on friendships and i always think back i have a tendency to think back from my childhood onwards it's a way i always like look at it it's also that first group of people you choose to hang out with choose to share with So still then your family don't necessarily choose right you, you you land up in a family and then you figure your way ahead but when you get a group of people together and decide to be friends with them suddenly realize that you can behave in a way that you don't behave with your parents you get to share like you said you get to share things you get to be part of a group but also starts almost like this tension because once you start building friendships you also start to understand how dynamics change how they evolve or sometimes someone who's your best friend today might not be your friend only tomorrow and then you're like this 5 6 year old who is like what is this feeling i'm getting because she she or he was playing with me till yesterday today they don't even want to hang out with me hmm. and i think that that comes with i'm sorry to cut you off but hmm. that comes with a lot of us growing in different areas of our life where suddenly we don't feel aligned with each other it's like suddenly my goals are pretty different than yours and somewhere 
as you keep growing because your belief systems change your perspective change your approach towards life and everything changes and when they are not aligned with the other person that's when the friendship starts to grow apart and when you're growing apart you and it's not like you're growing apart in the same way so the one person might still be stuck in the same spot the other person's moving away and that leads to what's called one sided friendships and relationships right is that mm. you know you're still there where you mm. were and the other person's gone away or in some cases you want to be that friend but and you behave like that but the other person doesn't even consider you a friend what do you do in scenarios like that one sided friendships are a tricky let's accept the fact that you know it's tough to get out of any kind of friendship first of all what happens when you are in 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 any friendship you have expectations let's accept no matter even if you are whether you're 14 yeah. you're 40 yeah you always have expectations that a uh, the person my friend is always going to be in touch with me we are going to text each other every single day we're going to speak to each other every single day there is going to be some kind of and today now that we know that social media is the easiest and quickest way to sort of reach out to people sending memes to each other is like today's new norm yeah staying, staying in touch yeah. that's what okay. i do all day long <laughs> and we do have expectations um and what happens with one sided friendship with uh, it's it's like you feel you've been giving in a lot more it's because your expectation of wanting to always you know latching on to this person all the time and the other person wants their own sense of freedom and space to explore their life so what happens there's this one person who's so attached to the friend and this another person who wants to explore life yeah. not that that the person is not in love with his friend yeah. okay there's still friendship yeah. they still have that kind of an equation but because there's expectation that's building up on and on this other, this person does not give the other one the sense of free, freedom to be themselves go out and search meanwhile i'm here we can always be together as friends yeah talking about that um i i i went through a lot of tough time you know when we talk about friendships because i never had friends specifically because my college days where i used to focus on my studies in fact whenever i had extra time i would do all those extra courses on psychology and counseling and all of things all different things i used to do a lot of studies so i i realized my college days were really tough a because i did have friends who were not aligned with me because they wanted to do a lot of different things whereas i was someone who was who was more focused in terms of my work my career i wanted to explore a lot of things more than that i realized that this is set of group they have there were a lot of ups and downs going on it's like they have expectation of wanting you to be there everywhere if you're not there if you're not the part of the cult goodbye it's like that and i realized that now i'm seeing all of this in 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 my friendship and i realized it's better to back off because i'm not i'm not seeing some kind of alignment here and that's what happens with most of relationships in most of friendships where you tend to go apart when you're not aligned so one sided friendship comes because a there's a lot of expectations and today's generation i would say they are constantly expecting to be there for each other there's no harm in expectations in expecting the other person or your friend to be there but having said that giving that sense of freedom to your friend to be whatever they want to be while you are there nurturing that friendship that you know whenever we meet when we are not going to taunt each other saying when did we meet last we haven't even met you don't even have time for me ha tum bhi to mujhe bhul gaye but more than that it's like tujhe to yaad hi nahi aati tu to call hi nahi karti tujhe waqt hi nahi hai you are so busy with your things so we see a lot of these dramas that happens in relationship and because this constant taunt and constant sarcasm that's there a part of that friendship that the other person starts withdrawing that's when one sided relationship comes into the picture that's when you have to deal with a lot of breakups also in in friendships and that goes for both relationships and friendships right is that if you don't set expectations or are you not being open about what your own expectations are because we are assuming ki the other person knows what mm. you want yeah you're always assuming obviously they know this but the other person is also in their own world they're doing their own thing they're like why are you getting upset why are you saying mm. these things i feel that many times in friendships we take the fact that the other person knows what we want for granted 
but in reality they actually, they might just be clueless about it because you never spoke about it yeah more than that it's also to do with of course you have to have a clear communication and what are you really looking for it's not to do with friendship at a very younger age where you're you're still in adolescent some of you growing from a very tender age of say like 12 13 14 but it's also to do with your teenage days where you're still exploring your life now this is the time where you have to you have to focus on what am i supposed to do in my life okay and when that hits you that adulting hits you up that's when you start to realize that it's time for me to take a step back from doing all that fun and 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 all that fun kind element in in my life and also put in a bit of seriousness what i'm supposed to think about what am i supposed to do ahead so what happens when someone is marching on that journey of self awareness that's when they start to withdraw with these kind of relationship like friendships and that's when the other person is also supposed to respect that that you know what you also march towards that that stage of your life so will i and we make each other better people as friends you mentioned adulting i think that's an interesting point to pick up right is that I, that's almost that point when like i said it's no longer about the fun it's no longer about just hanging out it's about okay now i'm getting serious about life cuz now i'm an adult so i have to be serious about life and then suddenly the groups you are with also change right? there's some people who you become friends with because it's needed for you professionally some people you become friends with who are your older friends you know since childhood but you have lesser and lesser time for them then you also make a group of friends who are fun to hang out with as grown ups and you suddenly have these three four different groups and you're constantly feeling like oh am i not giving one of them enough time and you're doing all of them for different reasons and some a, a friend of mine recently said that you cannot have adult friendships without an agenda and i thought back i'm like i think i maybe have like a handful of adult friends it's true who have known since even po- maybe post college where i have a no agenda friendship there is always some connection to some work thing or something in life can we have no agenda friendships as adults of course so uh, having said that i do have a best friend since last 17 years this was during our school times that we met not school i would say just i passed out school and this was during the college times which is like 17 years back that's when i happened to meet her and we are still best friends and i realized that sometimes you can have friendships without any specific agenda without any um any malice in your heart of wanting to um seek something from that person it's like it's it's usually said there's a saying which says that um having a best friend is more like you go and visit that friend's place and you absolutely enjoy doing nothing together so even that's kind of a friendship that's the, that's the kind of friendship people want to because want to have a because you're not judged and uh you do not have any specific agenda or any any self um you know a motive that you have in your head of extracting something out of it even as an adult when you make friendship like i said we keep evolving as a, as as an individual and when we start growing in our life like for example whatever stage in your life you are right now you will get you'll you'll be aligned with certain people and suddenly you become close with not necessarily that you've you've gone far off from the those old friends but it's like you've you've become more comfortable and compatible with this set of friends and people so that does not mean that you're negating any possibility of having good friendship with the older ones but somehow you're it's like like i said it's like you're growing in different aspects of your life and you get attached to different people and sometimes you also realize that maybe the cycle of that friendship is done Hmm. I've had this and I've been very I I've, I've felt guilty about this a lot I would say maybe a little after the lockdowns opened up because there were friends from like 5 7 8 years ago work friends people who came friends because we worked together on who would constantly message okay things have opened up do you want to catch up I would never say no I say yeah I will plan something right it's a very like you know it's like you're delaying but it. no commitment like no commitment either. right till finally one of them said that you know that you don't have to meet me but at least be clear on that yeah I'm, because you've been giving rain checks on everything i'm like see it it's fine i get it i'm like i said i said that's true 
because I don't necessarily, maybe I, in my agenda of things of or, or other priority list of things, this is something which I don't know if I want to spend time doing. Maybe if we happen to just meet up, we'll, we'll jam, but it's not a priority list anymore. I'm also worried about saying that. It feels like a very harsh thing to say that I don't want to hang out with you anymore. Is there a way to kind of switch your mind from being like, you know, I'm this person who's, no, it's okay, I'll still be nice. I will still say, no, no, we'll meet maybe in a few weeks, maybe in a month or so. But I was saying that maybe it's not something that we need to do. Yeah, of course. There are ways how you can say no to somebody. And more than saying no, it's about, I wouldn't say like re giving rain checks on everything. It's more to do with sometimes when you're growing up, it's like communicating to the other person, saying that I have a few things on my plate right now, but that does not negate the fact that I am anywhere overlooking our equation. But that completely depends. If you still have that equation with that person of, you know, that, that person or that friend, then that person, that friend will understand at the same time that yes, you do have, because you know, we all are adulting in, in, in our own different ways, right? And as we keep growing older, we do have a set of priorities that keeps shifting and shuffling and changing. Not that friendship is not a part of ours anymore. It's just that there are a few other things which have gone on the non-negotiable lists now. Okay, where friendship as an as a adolescent and teenager, where we used to look at it as a, a as an escape for a lot of things. Also, it used to be more like a comfort zone because we used to rant about everything and feel good, not having to uh, feel judged by them, just how we feel judged by a lot of other people like a family or siblings or so, so on and so forth. But as we keep growing older, we do have different set of priorities which are like absolute non-negotiables. So as you, as you do that, when you communicate to the other person that I do have a lot of things on my plate right now, but I wouldn't mind hanging out with you. It's just about you. It's, I'm just buying some time from you. Say this only when you feel that you want to meet them at some point. It could be one month down the line. It could be a couple of weeks down the line. It could be two months. But make sure that you communicate clearly about what and how do you feel. Okay. It's not that you... Because sometimes, you know, that's when a lot of friendships also break because they realize you're ghosting them. Yeah. And and that's the most painful and hurtful thing, especially when the other friend is is feeling for you. Okay. It's it's they feel that friendship with you. They feel they want to stay connected to you. But somewhere you're sort of withdrawing yourself. You're like put your guards on. Why? Because you do have set of non-negotiables and that's fine. So when you communicate about how things are changing for me and how I would like to buy some time from you, but be very specific about the time because time is elastic. If you say like, I'm going to meet you soon, be specific when. Maybe it could be um, maybe in a month's time. Maybe I'll meet you in a couple of weeks, but make sure when you say that, you upfront go ahead and make plan with this person. That's Set it up. Block the calendar. Exactly. And what happens is, that's how you build trust in friendships. So it's very important to communicate clearly. And if you don't feel like meeting this person, just clearly say that I have a lot of things. But let me just give it some, you know, let me give it a thought. I'll get back to you. Okay. So you'll be clear whether you want to meet or you don't want to meet. But be pretty precise about it. I want to flip that around. If you're the person who receives that, hmm. it's not something we all take well, right? If someone says, I don't want to hang out with you or don't want to catch up with you, especially if it's someone who you feel you're close to, you take it like, you know, it really hits you hard, right? I'm of, a, of the opinion that, you know, when it's a romantic relationship, something like that happens, it has this peak of like emotion, but you might get over it. Sooner than you'll get over a friendship that does, that where that happens because that might sting a lot more, right? Because I mean, because it is that's more personal for me is that I feel friendships sting if they break a lot more and a lot longer. Relationships will will have that one big peak and then you will go through it. But how do you deal with things? How does one deal with things if you are on the receiving end or someone saying, "A, either you're getting ghosted or you told that okay, maybe don't hang out with you anymore." Again, communication is the key. Where supposedly if you feel that the other person is ghosting you in terms of friendship, speak out. Ask them that do you mind communicating clearly to me that 
what is it that it's bothering sometimes you know what happens we also tend to ghost in friendships or in any relationship per se because we don't feel acknowledged because we don't a like i said we don't feel aligned with that person anymore so if supposedly if me on the receiving end make you feel judged make you feel that you know you're getting some uncomfortable vibe with me like for example if i meet somebody um someone who's not aligned with me someone who has a very different mindset than i i do have and i feel that i'm i'm not compatible somewhere then i'm going to withdraw myself i'm going to make sure that you know i am ghosting this person i'm kind of keep that one one arm distance so if you are on a receiver's end and ask yourself by any chance am i making that other person feel uncomfortable and having said that communicate that is there something that's bothering you about me speak it up i don't mind but you know no one likes to get the feedback there was a research in fact i would like to share there was a research and this was more to do with the corporate sector but this applies everywhere there was a research that said that um, so a company manager asked their employees to give the feedback about how the manager was like how am i as an individual as a manager to you everyone gave their own feedback the manager didn't like it so that came out as uh, people thought that people are no more altruistic anymore people don't care about others emotions and they are just out rude and they are very rude and uh, they realized that because our manager does not like receiving the feedback we rather not give so what happened when you're asking somebody so people don't like feedback but there's a way to do it there's a way to from a receive like a receivers and also so ask them about is there something bothering you and be open if someone tells you about it that you know this is something that sort of pinches me about you this is something about you that i'm not comfortable with how about we tweak we change things a little bit so that we can have a good equation together and on a receiver's end you're supposed to make sure that you're giving a comfortable space for the other person to speak up and give you a constructive criticism even if it's a criticism for that matter or a constructive feedback so that you're open to it if someone says that you know what i don't like the fact that you're texting me every single day yeah be open about it it's like maybe that person does not come from a space of regular communication maybe that person wants wants to stay connected but not in a way that you want you know my uh, my wife pooja has a interesting way to talk about this she says that never give feedback always give feed forward talk about what you want to do next do if you spend too much time oh you did this to me or you acted like this people always take offense but he says maybe we should do this going ahead you feel less judged that's a constructive feedback yeah and more than that what what she said it makes sense so usually in psychology it said that whenever you want to give out a feedback to somebody even in a relationship to to your partner or your spouse or your parent or anybody instead of using you statement use i it's like you don't do this you are always late you don't make me you know you don't love me instead you know just say that you know when you do this i feel loved i love the fact that you express yourself this way i love the way that you know when you come on time it makes me feel loved so more more than you start using i statement this can help a lot of relationships and friendships there was one question which i thought was very interesting and we don't often um discuss this is that why are friendships different between a boy and a boy a boy and a girl and a girl and a girl we don't necessarily discuss how friendships are different especially when it comes to you know different genders how are they different so let's take this fact check done that men and women are wired differently we come from a very different space altogether a because men are asked to be rough tough they don't operate from emotions they operate from cognitive abilities they more they are more cognitive than emotion whereas women they operate from emotions so which is why a lot of female friendships are more emotional oriented like emotion oriented rather than for for guys like kya kar raha hai even after like 2 3 4 months they like kya kar rahe hai chal milte hai okay 
पर फीमेल इफ सपोजली द सेम थिंग हैपन्स इन 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 फीमेल फ्रेंडशिप तो लाइक हाँ बट तुझे तो टाइम ही नहीं है बात करने का आई फील सो अलोन यू नो दैट यू मीन सो मच टू मी बट तुझे वक्त ही नहीं तुझे फ्रेंडशिप ही नहीं रखनी है वाई बिकॉज वेमेन दे डू ऑपरेट फ्रॉम द स्पेस ऑफ इमोशंस सो अ लॉर ऑफ टाइम्स वेन मैन मीट यू नो दीज गाइज मीट दिस द गाय फ्रेंडशिप दिस लाइक There's no emotional talk talk There as such. There is no such. content to it. It exactly. is exactly. There's more like you can cut copy paste the same catch up between guy friends on every single time you catch up because you're necessarily talking about the same stuff. It's the same jokes. There's nothing of actual consequence exactly. for in life. Yeah. It does change from time to time. Like sometimes you do have that when someone's going through something, but largely everybody sticks to stuff of that course. is. I agree about the non-emotion part and the fact that it comes from just like societal wiring, right? you're not because you've been wired that way yeah. you've been you've been conditioned you've been conditioned to make sure that you focus a lot more on your um your approach uh in terms of your personality how you want to present yourself out there in the world but well, women are not taught that women are taught from being a nurturer being someone who's who's coy someone who comes from the space of emotions altogether someone who's more like a giver whereas men are more like i wouldn't say giver they're more like takers in terms of emotions and when we talk about social equation it's more to do with emotions only which is why when when boy boy and girl girl when boy boy friendship when they meet when guys meet they they have a very casual friendship they will specifically talk about either they're talking about sports or politics or something of those lines but no emotions attached whereas females when they meet the more their conversations are more emotional driven they they're talking about relationships than things men talk about things not relationships i don't know if it's a recent phenomena because you are seeing because there's a conversation about conditioning happening and it's happening more and more now even from the time they're kids i know it's a smaller percentage and hopefully it'll grow is the conditioning is something we're all looking into right like like i have a daughter and a son um and we're constantly looking at okay are we conditioning it's it's as simple as are you conditioning a girl to choose pink and a boy to choose blue right it's a very like basic thing but you condition them like girls wear pink guys blue now so i consciously wear pink around her now um, and um, she has slowly moved towards blue. i mean she, this favorite color business is anyway a random thing but like she has mo- moved away from the color pink a little bit more right um it's about the fact that it's a, everything from sport to just what I was in her class the other day, and they were talking about how all the boys don't like unicorns because unicorns are what girls I, like. Yeah. Boys like dragons, huh. and it starts with that. Like it's it's just smaller things like that, and it evolves into as we get older. It's like sport, right? And and I feel when I saw the women's Premier Premier League the other day, I was so happy to see so many people in the crowd. Said this is women playing cricket, which so many people across age groups and genders coming to watch. it felt like a moment because you have the i mean the biggest sport in the country doing that and but at the base which still comes back to this right is that if you take all that wider lens and the most intimate of relationships and friendships is the fact that women share more are open to that conversation most men aren't most men are uncomfortable with sharing their feelings they don't like have that wall in front of them yeah because they've been asked to which is why we see conditioning does matter and how you've been brought up your exposure your experience and how you've been shaped as an individual is very very important and which is why i do talk a lot about childhood conditioning because that is your foundation for the rest of your life and uh, one of the physician his name is gabor mat do you, i don't know if you know yeah, about yeah, him gabor, yeah. i love he talks about childhood trauma he talks about how important childhood conditioning is and with men with especially let's talk about boys okay they've been taught to be self sufficient that you have to do this you have to be outright you have to uh, you know be like a man if if a kid if a boy is crying the first thing that comes out is why are you crying like a girl but 
for me like i have a lot of kids around me my sisters kids and my brothers kids and everyone so when a male kid cries when my nephews cry i say like that's fine cry it's okay to cry You're expressing your emotion yeah yeah like if you feel like expressing your emotion speak that's fine it it matters a lot because you're allowing that space for a kid to express themselves so that when they grow into an adult they can express themselves even in relationships today we face a lot of issue not just in friendship but also in relationships because we holistically look at guys as a closed wall a closed box they don't open up reason because we've been conditioned like that we've been conditioned we we've, we've been telling guys boys to be rough rona nahi hai uh ab bahut weak nahi ban ke dikhana hai you have to make sure that you're pretty rough enough to face the world whereas women girls specifically they they've, they've been conditioned to be all coy and nice and even if they cry they're like it's okay what happened to you why are you crying it's like let's do both to both and that's very important and which is why childhood conditioning is very important so um lot of parents they condition kid to like pink like the girl to like pink and and guys to like blue or uh, blue or or some other color like black because black feels more masculine you are supposed to give them the choice to choose whatever they are comfortable with and uh, though you can do it from your end but like you said when we look at the broader prospect because when they go out and meet friends and when they are into society uh, of course that's through school only so when they become a part of the society they realize that it's time for us to contribute to the society it's time for us to become a part of a big cult and that's when they start adapting things that that's there on a holistic nature that's when even if say your daughter may like blue right now but if gradually she she goes on a lot of women starts liking pink they're going to condition her to like pink that's why it's very important for you to make sure to give her the space to choose whatever she wants it's like that you have made a good point right it's when you go out as much as you might condition a child as a parent they go into the world and they're subjected to how everything is and they slowly want to like you want to be okay i i want to conform to what this is i want to be a part of this group and what their dynamics are i want to be liked i want to feel included because it's very tough to do something which doesn't feel like which feels like it's not something everybody else does because you're so worried about oh my god like what if they judge me and what if they don't include me in this i'll be alone i'll have no one to play with i'll have no friends and that then progresses towards how you behave as with friends when you're a kid to how you behave in a relationship when you're an adult that's that's what turns a lot of people as people pleasers uh so there is a beautiful theory which is a psychodynamic theory by eric erickson he is a psychologist he was a psychologist so he came up with psychodynamics where he talks about different stages of life and there's this is one stage of life which is the adolescent stage where once the kid goes out it's an infancy stage where they go out and look at themselves from others perspective because now they become a part of society so they want to make sure that they have been liked they have been approved they've been validated by other people as a whole so what happens if you have made sure that you've given right conditioning to your kid saying i acknowledge you for who you are so make sure that you have your own individuality even if people don't like you for certain things in you that's fine what happens when you teach the kid to love their individuality they stop become becoming people pleasers and that's when they learn to be themselves even if i like blue and all my friends like pink i'm still going to be a person who likes blue that's me so your conditioning does matter a lot so that you are not a malleable person and you don't turn into a people pleaser as you keep growing older so in as an adult a lot of times you can't say no because you've not been taught to because you want to be a part of that community you don't want to be looked down by somebody you know one of my favorite memes of all time um it's something which i shared i, I once did a a presentation on how on on batman and there was this this one which is basically saying that you know the, the images there are a, a lot of girls all dressed as princesses 
it's one girl who's dressed as batman and it says in a sea of princesses be batman or, or bad girl um i think that's the important thing right? is, is that that parent who said it's fine you want to dress like bad girl dress like bad girl it's fine yeah. it's just saying no no but we dress like princesses you should be like a princess and it's that aspect which i have realized and because i'll think back on my 20s um and about how i was in friendships and relationships because i was so close to it and because i was so worried about people pleasing and and conforming what ended up happening was the fact that i didn't i was never myself i was always what i believed every group i was a different person every relationship was a different person because i felt so the other person needed because i i i wanted to make sure that i am i have that sense of belongingness yeah. and i can resonate because i think i did the same thing in my 20s yeah i remember one of the reason why i i didn't have a lot of like i don't have friends a lot of friends today because um i was because i wanted to be a part of a group i made sure that i'm you know i'm i'm tweaking myself like my personality to fit into that box so that they like me and this comes from a lot of um our childhood upbringing that you you have to be liked by people for which you have to make sure that you you know you 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 change yourself you you mold yourself as per people you forget your individuality and that's what i did during my 20s because i used to do everything to be liked by them and then i realized at one point when i realized enough is enough i have to be myself i have to love myself enough because people are walking all over you why because despite of despite of no matter how much you do for people they'll still pinpoint one thing that they don't like about you that's that's actually the fact of relationships because what people do is they look at that one negative aspect of you that's not aligned with them but they'll overlook all the nine things that somewhere you are aligned you know you're working and i realize i've been like I, i've been literally i've forgotten who i was as as an individual and that's what you're not supposed to do this is like a major red flag in you you're not supposed to change yourself change your change in a good way is fine suppose if you are someone who's too much in a cocoon not really moving out of your comfort space but if your friend asks you to do that if the person makes you a better person like your friend makes you a better person nothing like it but if you have to change yourself your individuality that's a red flag i'm going to be 41 this year right and i was talking to my wife pooja the other day and i was saying that in my 20s i was just trying to be what everybody knew i felt everybody needed me to be in my early 30s and and, and we married towards the end of my uh, 20s i was like being okay this is who i need to be because okay now i'm you know it's not about just being married but you know you're running a business you have employees you're becoming you've become a father okay this is how i need to be and i don't call it a midlife crisis for me it's like i would say my mid 30s onwards i have finally gone back to being who i actually am and um, i feel because at some point you have to sit down and say because the the strain of just holding that in changes how we look at every friendship every relationship every equation and i can resonate because i think a lot of people it's it's a meme as well yeah. which says that 20s is when you are according to people but when you're in your 30s you're like hell with people <laughs> let me be myself, myself. Yeah. and i think yeah. i think so th- that's what even i'm learning in my 30s i'm like do hell with people let me be myself and that's what i've learned over years where whether you want to acknowledge me for who i am i'm going to be myself and this is what we need to learn in friendships if you don't do that what ends up happening at least that's what happened to me personally is that if you latch on to a friend so much and slowly over time you will start saying okay is this friendship a relationship especially if they do, you know if if it's someone you could have a romantic inclination towards and you and you spoil that friendship because you've gotten so attached that in your head it's more than just being friends and then just like that takes the whole thing away um it's that old uh, which is that one wo maine pyar kiya wala dialogue na ladka ladki dost nahi ho sakte kabhi dost nahi ho sakte right it's that it's, and i think it comes from that is that you attach yourself so much to a gender norms of like just like okay only you know guys are friends with guys and girls are friends with girls but also the fact that if you are friends the eventual road is that you have to have a relationship because it's attached i think attachment 
uh, has a very different connotation to it. It depends. Supposedly, I have a lot of male friends, um, along with female friends, like colleagues also, for that matter. But you know that you have a good equation with them because you get you are aligned in a lot of different ways. But also at the same time, you know you don't feel for that person. You do, you're not attached in a different way. to turn it into relationship for a lot of people today like especially youngsters if we talk about especially today's gen z we see lot of male female friendship that suddenly start to develop like that kind of an attachment to the other gender because a they feel they want to explore themselves that's first thing and when we talk about having attachment towards this one person for a very long period of time and suddenly you feel like i have feelings for this person then it's like it's it's again very subjective because it depends that a lot of people like different genders coming together they share great equation they're best of friends but they don't have that kind of a vibe with each other because um say for example a girl ha a girl has a very different relationship goal in her head and this guy who's a friend of hers is not matching those goals so it's it's naturally that you're not going to be inclined towards that person but supposedly if if this female has certain relationship goals that she has i want a guy to be like this or this and the other friend of her is somewhere exhibiting few traits that are somewhere aligned you're definitely going to going to get inclined with men uh, it's usually said men tend to fall for any female friend that is true why because men are visual creatures so when they look at a female someone who's pretty good looking gradually when you know few years pass by when they realize yeah but she doesn't have all those traits and that's when you tend to realize it's time to break up because i don't feel too inclined towards her anymore that's when a lot of uh, friendship that turned into relationship break up because a you got into a relation because you liked her but that was more sort of an infatuation but what about the equation a lot of times it's just the infatuation over the looks but you don't vibe you are not aligned there are a lot of things where you like poles apart so you still tend to feel ki acha wo friendship ko relationship mein convert kar de so that they get into it but then they realize that what really matters a lot of people think that love is the only thing attraction is the only thing that's required in relationship but that's not the fact you require trust you require commitment you require compatibility compatibility is must you're supposed to be compatible physically emotionally mentally and even on some extent spiritually like on 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 a vibration level if you're not compatible on these aspect just being physically compatible it's not going to work it's not work and also think is you have to be aligned with thing where do you see where do you want your life to go right um it's like a partnership are your goals aligned are the things you want in your life aligned are, are you aligned in the way you you want your life to be as you grow older that's what it takes to hold on more than anything else uh, everything else is it comes and goes it ebbs and it flows but as long as you're both aligned your intention in the relationship is 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 clear everything else can be worked with um, and i think most of the relationships break up today because after a while they realize that their relationship goals are pretty different for example they've gotten into a relationship where one wants to just have fling yeah. doesn't want to commit commit per se but the other person got into a relationship thinking that i want to marry this person when your relationship goals are so pole apart you've not communicated well you anyway going to end up breaking up and then that friendship also gets ruined yeah. because of which i think of course there's a lot of trauma that the person has to go through you know and and, and what also happens is if you carry the baggage of one relationship if it get, breaks up or a one friendship if if that gets broken on to the next one on to the next one right because you're carrying that almost like baggage with you is it ever possible to look at a relationship from a fresh lens or you're always going to have the baggage of the last one it's an amazing question because a lot of i i do get a lot of dms like this that i've gotten into a relationship but i can't trust this person or maybe i'm scared what if he or she 
starts costing me so we uh, as human beings we have tendency to associate everything we associate things like our, our relationship with our future relationships and uh, we associate for example how i was the it's usually said uh, even the attachment theory says the same thing that the kind of adult relationship that you have depends upon the relationship you had with your primary caregivers so we've associated and that comes from from our a, a being like a mere nature of individuality of our human being so uh, coming from a space of wanting to have fresh lens you have to do a lot of work on yourself it just takes self awareness to understand that the person i've met right now is pretty different than the person i've been with earlier they are two different individuals their upbringing their exposure their their um experience and the way they've been brought up the way that they've seen world are so different than what the other person did now if me and my sibling are two different people altogether despite of having same primary caregivers yet we are different we differ in a lot of our our approach and our choices because as we were growing we had different influences in our life that that shapes us and that's how when you have that kind of uh, you live in that cognizance that maybe this person is different than whom i was dating earlier when you are in that consciousness you will end up looking at this new person from a fresh lens it's also about you giving yourself enough time yes right um more than i think time does matter but a lot of times you know despite of say if you were date if if you had a breakup like long back and you've got into a relationship now after all that courage and healing process and a lot of things you will not heal unless and until you do not heal those aspects of you that you're carrying on with you since long long time from your past relationships so it's very important for you to heal from that past to let that go that whatever i've experienced because that person was different i was different we had different goals maybe we did not get aligned at one point of time and not necessarily that the person i'm meeting right now has to be the same thing it maybe it's a different journey let me explore let me see how this new person is what are the go- likes dislikes all of it that's also like i said this the other day to a friend i'm like shouldn't expect your friends to be your therapist and other should expect your partner to be your therapist that's why you have a Let's therapist let therapist be a therapist let there be a therapist be a therapist because yeah. you have to figure a way to understand what's in your own head how you dealing with the experiences and not put that on you know the, the the friends you have or the friends you'll make or the relationships you have do you feel that at some level because of how we interact now as human beings right of a friends now is no longer just like people we meet in person you know it could be someone you just met online um so you're just chatting with are our expectations different now in the world we are today they are uh, specifically talking about because our approach uh, is very difficult to explore uh unless and until you don't spend quality time with this person like you said that today we meet friends um a through social groups whether it's to do with any forums that are online uh whether it's to do with through our social media a lot of different ways well, i've met someone who's like uh say my friend's friend or my friend's friend's friend but unless and until i haven't really spent quality time with this friend of mine i will not know him or her and it's important to explore that aspect of friendship before you sort of latch on to that person you know today like i feel bad because all of us are somewhere so deep down are this alone in a way where and there are a lot of reasons why we are alone is because we've built our guards up we have our guards up we don't want someone to come close to us even in terms of friendship because we're so scared of being hurt we're so scared of being because everything we go damaged. through is public right everything we go through feels like it's part of public yeah knowledge yeah so a we are so scared of being hurt we're so scared of being damaged as an individual that we don't want to step into uh, giving ourselves to somebody completely and that happens with friendships also that it is important to know the person how they are before you completely give in you become like an open version to them know what the person is like explore about them so 
I think it it has changed. The definition of friendship has also changed. It's it's become little um, short term. If you are like me, only then I'm gonna like you. So I think people have lost this essence of accepting individuality and respecting it. That it's you like and I, algorithm. yeah. So I know that you are going to be different than me, and I'm going to be different than you, and I, we respect that. I don't see that aspect today, and that's that's. If if you don't like traveling, you don't like having fun out there. We're not aligned. I can keep going on, but we have a few rules on the show. One of them is, is the fact that we stick to a certain duration of time in which we do the episode. So we leave room for doing many more episodes. I want to close off by asking you one. I feel it's going to bring the whole thing together. Is that what is the most misunderstood thing about friendships for us as individuals? One of the thing that we just discussed is that you don't need to stay in touch all the time, and a there's lack of communication in friendship. Uh, one of the other misunderstood thing is um, people think that once you've gotten into a relationship, and this I see in lot of aspects. We also see a lot of memes that अच्छा उसको लड़की मिल गई वो दोस्त भूल गया. Okay, this is also one of the thing. But having said that, it's important to balance it out. That, of course, because it's a new relationship, I want to explore it all the more. But do not forget where you're coming from. So this is too misunderstood today. Where uh, I wouldn't say misunderstood, but this is a neglected part of our friendship. That it's important for you to balance it out. If you think that your friendship was really valuable, if your friend was there with you to thin and thick, okay, and you don't want your your friendship to be like um all foam and no beer kind of a thing you want to make sure that you you are not just throw you know throwing your love through words but also through action so be there with each other during good times bad times all of it sometimes in friendship a lot of us think that you need to be a therapist for that person or you need to um you know give out solution to that person your your friend of yours sometimes just being there is enough just be there listen to that person what is it that the person wants to tell you this friend wants to tell you it's just about acknowledging that you and i are different and yet we just enjoy our companionship enjoy each other's company it could be as simple as going to the beach doing nothing and just being you know being silent even that's a friendship to be to to relish you don't have to talk you don't have to do too many things together so one of the misunderstood thing about friendship today is you have to do a lot of things to be friends you have to speak a lot about you to be friends but not necessary you can just share few aspects of your life listen to the person like your friend be a good company don't judge just be there it's enough for friendship and don't ghost <laughs> just like point taken <laughs> point to be noted but don't ghost it's like if you feel that you are no more aligned with this friend of yours speak it up say that it's a theek hai you know maybe and if you think that you want to stay friends with this person communicate that you know it's just about there's there's priorities changes in pecking order and just share your pecking order with your friend and if a friend really cares for you they'll understand because talking about my friendship with this friend of mine where we've been friends since last 17 years where we've had a lot of massive fights because you know like i said in like 20s i wanted her to be there and a lot of things and I'm like you are not in touch and blah blah but you know as you grow older as you start adulting a lot more you realize you don't have to stay too much in touch but you just need to be there for each other sometimes it's like today even if we talk to each other like say once a week or twice a week sometimes sometimes just randomly dropping a text say hi just thought about you and hope you're doing good sometimes just something like this is enough it's like randomly picking up phone and saying that are you free let's catch up and even if you're not free you're like okay set out a time that maybe this this time works for you you respect that if i am busy the other person might be busy too respect that so 
it's when you respect those differences and i think that's what i learned in my 30s also that it's okay maybe sometimes you don't need to talk every day but just being there and ex- respecting just share that one meme that's it that's it and and i'll be very honest this friend of mine we we share a lot of memes with each other yeah. like videos with each other and all of it but hi hello kam hoti hai Correct. so we know that it's so a lot of different ways to stay in touch but just do it it's like that thanks so much for doing this has been fabulous to have you on the podcast and thank you. and and first of many for sure mm. Absolutely yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, and uh, I think we're going to explore a lot more in terms of friendships and relationships and a lot more. Thank you. <laughs>